Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Ardent Wife podcast. It's a joy to be with you. And today's topic, we're going to be talking about taking care of ourselves so that we can care for others. And that means in our marriage, especially in our families, and then everywhere else. So I'm excited to jump in this conversation with my co-hosts, Dee and Tiffany. So all right, you guys, when you when you hear that, when you hear right? Taking care of myself and then maybe to take care of others or what, what comes up for you? What, what does that mean for you in your life? Um, the context of that for you. So there's a lot that comes up for me, especially in our modern day society. Mm -hmm. Um, burnout has become like an official, official clinical syndrome. Like the world health organization has made that actual syndrome. And it's because mentally and physically and emotionally people are exhausted mm -hmm. and i honestly think it's because we are not doing what we're called to do in the first seven days and that is to take sabbath rest mm -hmm. um and resting in the lord and so a lot of women uh have multiple roles uh we provide we don't provide but we add to the income in our homes we also manage our households. We also, some of us homeschool, some of us lead in ministry uh, and we do all the things, but then we don't take the time to sit down and take care of ourselves. And that's what God called us to do in Sabbath rest. And it's not mm -hmm. about self-care, which um, has become a movement because of this burnout. And in my eyes, self-care as you see it on social media is more like grooming. It's getting your hair done, getting your nails done, doing those type of things. That's not truly self-care in my eyes. That's grooming. Like I said, you don't have to have your nails done to love others well and take care of yourself. Your hair does not have to look good. You don't need to have your toes looking right. Um, but things like exercising daily, nourishing your body well, um, possibly finding things that you enjoy to do like a hobby uh, reading, but being with God, being in his word, prayer, worship, those are ultimately what I need to do to take care of myself so that I can love others well. And something that I've actually been practicing the last few weeks is taking a gratitude walk in the mornings. Um, I used to jump out of bed and go straight into the word, which I still do I encourage but now I jump out of the bed and I put on my shoes and I go walk around we have like a circle that I can walk around um near my house and I walk around for 15 minutes and I literally just say thank you Lord I start mm -hmm. off with thank you Lord and thank you Lord for this day thank you Lord for and then it just becomes an ongoing thanking God for all the things that he puts on my spirit and then I come back into the house I make my tea and then I sit down and I get into the word and that has changed the posture of my heart so much. I can, my husband has noticed it. My children have noticed it. Um, and I was actually thinking the other day when I was walking, thank you, Lord, for this weather, because I live in New Jersey and it's not going to be. And it actually what had happened, it, it rained um, while I was getting ready to get out. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to take this gratitude walk in the rain. And then as soon as I walked outside, it stopped raining. And I was like, thank you, Lord, for stopping the rain. But then I thought about what about the snow? <laughs> but, you know, right now, this is what's working for me. I do have a treadmill. I'm not a fan of walking in the on the treadmill. But um, just those are some, that's what I do to take care of myself so that I can love my family well. And I also yeah. exercise. I also eat well. But I feel like spending time with God for me is what I need to do it. So I think it looks different for everyone. Um, but I definitely think that it's becoming an uh, epidemic in our society because of the busyness that we are, mm -hmm. we as people are deciding to put into our life. Right. And I like... Um... When you said it looks, you know, talking about our culture in the world, because when it, it's it's almost like we wear wear hustling and being busy like a badge of honor. Like in our day, that's a badge of honor. If I don't have any margin in my day, 
um, to do anything else. <laughs> like that's, that's what people are living for now, but it goes back to, I, and I read this quote that said true self-care isn't found by turning inward. It's found by turning Godward. Amen. You know, that's true self-care. Like you were saying, it's not like focusing all my energy. Oh, I need a massage or, oh, I need to go to the spa. I need these things. Like what we need is Jesus. <laughs> and Amen. so, and for me, I look at me in my life. My family always tell me, you don't ever sit down. Like if my mother-in-law is here, she's like, do you sit down? It's like, I'm going, Reese told me this morning, mommy, you keep running back and forth. So for me, <laughs> it's like, I'm doing laundry. I'm doing like, there's always something to be done. I'm vacuuming. I'm doing this. I'm dust. I, I sit down. And it's like, oh, it's dust on that. So I'm getting up to do that. So for me, self-care looks like rest. You know, mm -hmm. and I don't know if, you know, it, it looks like rest. Indeed, I like when you brought that up because in Genesis chapter two, verse one through three, it says, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. And do we think that God rested because he needed self-care? No, or because he needed, uh, because he was tired and he's like, no, I need to rest. No, he rested, I believe, as a pattern for us to show us like, hey, this balance between working and resting. And he sets this example. I always say, I don't believe, I feel like in all of that God and asks us to do, like he never asks us to do something he himself haven't done. Like he mm -hmm. always goes first. So I feel like this is him still going first and saying, hey, rest. Like, I'm going to set this, I don't need to rest, but I'm resting for you as an example for you um, so that you too will rest. So we can take that Sabbath rest and recognize that, hey, I'm not the one holding all these pieces together. Like it's God. I, you know, I think when we fail to rest, it's out of fear. You know, it's like, mm. I got to keep all these things going. I got to do this because if I take a break, then who's going to do it? And if I take a break, everything is going to fall apart. And then I, <laughs> you know, and that's, you know, it's an act of, you know, trust, this violent trust and surrender to God. It's like, you know, I'm going to take a break. You know, I'm going to rest. <laughs> And if it all falls apart, it falls apart. But I'm going to trust in you that you are the one who um, truly provides for me. It's not me and my doing, but it's me and my being, just being with you. I love that you share that scripture because um, something that was brought up to my attention recently in study is that we were created on the sixth day and then the next day we rested. Like God, and not only like God didn't need to rest, but he rested with us. Like that was the set for every first thing, our second day here after creation. And God's like, let's rest together. And I was like, wow, I never even thought about it like that. But that's how important rest is to God. And a lot of people uh, equate sleep and rest together. And they're two different things. Yeah. They're not the same thing. And we have opportunities. We have opportunities every day to sleep seven, six to eight hours as recommended. Right. But yeah. then we have moments in our day to rest mm -hmm. um, and just taking those times. And so people like I don't have enough time to rest. If you have five minutes of downtime in between time transition time you have time to rest and there's different ways you can do it you can do it through breath prayer you can do it through meditation um something that i recommend to my clients is a release meditation and it's literally at the end of every hour for five minutes just opening their hands and saying lord i release whatever it is whatever the stresses that they've been doing ongoing for the last hour and just continually saying i release putting a timer on the clock for five minutes and just continuing saying that release is rest for your body rest for your mind rest for your worries and so when we say rest sometimes people are like oh well i i get i go to sleep like no that's not what we're talking about um when we're saying that rest and then sabbath is con is being with the lord worshiping mm -hmm. and praising the lord that and we have opportunities to have not just on one day of the week we can yeah. sabbath ongoing throughout our week which is something that i've learned over the years because i was raised in a religion 
that was based off the Sabbath. And so I thought it was only on one day, everything shut down, sunset to sunset, and you didn't do anything but praise the Lord. But um, it was reading in Hebrews, I think it's Hebrews 4, that I realized that you can, you can, you can Sabbath all day, any time of the day, like the mm -hmm. Lord welcomes it into your life. Yeah. And to delight, right. That it's not just to rest, but we get to, God wants us to have fun. He wants yeah. us to enjoy his creation and enjoy yeah. you know, doing things, whether that's for you taking a walk or riding a bike or just, it, just seeing his creation and being in it and enjoying the relationships yeah. we have with each other versus numbing out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think that's what sometimes, um, self-care can be, you know, and according to where it's like, you want to numb out, you don't want to be present in this. And that's not really, um, that doesn't really do you any service, right. To just numb out. God wants us to be, you know, intentional to see, to be present. I guess that's the word. Alive, I'm yeah, to be alive, to be in it, to be like, mm -hmm. whoa, it's like, we get to look around. It's like, whoa, whatever it is that he has in front of us. And then seeking, um, that delight in the yeah. Sabbath. That it's yeah. not this, you know, it's not this like, oh, you must, you know, sit in church for eight hours. That's your yeah. Sabbath. No, it's, you know, it's this delight, this rest, this mm -hmm. enjoying of one another, this enjoying stepping back and yeah. being thankful. You know, I yeah. love that you're doing that, D. And just not only are you getting gratitude, which is so good for our bodies, but you're getting sunlight the first thing of the day, mm -hmm. which be a whole nother podcast, but it's just really good for you, you know, and you're away from a screen and just those, those yeah. pieces and those habits are, are huge. Yeah. And I think in the culture that we live in, we're so connected, right? There's social media. And so we always feel like we have to be on, right? And so I think even if we don't do like a meditation or if we don't pray or if we don't go for a walk, like be still, like how often do your day, do you just sit? and do nothing. The TV isn't on. You're not reading a book. You're not reading your Bible. You're not scrolling your phone. You're like, I take my phone to the bathroom sometimes. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, you're, not like you're, you're like, you're always connected, but yeah. just to be still, just to be still, to get quiet, to hear, you know, what do I hear? What do I see? What do, you know, to that's hard. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. It's, what it is is it's stewardship also like yeah. that's what we are called to good stewardship right mm -hmm. and recognizing our limitations but yeah. also stewarding our mind and our body is what we're called to do and our finances and our home like we're god gave us these gifts and so being still for some people might not be good stewardship for them let's be honest like some people being still might be like torture okay but yeah. just stewarding your body well however that is is taking care of yourself um and so that you can take care of others right and mm -hmm. yeah so and i also think in the striving that we do all mm -hmm. the busyness we're not called to strive we're yeah. called to walk in purpose we're called mm -hmm. to share the gospel we're called to show the goodness that jesus has given us and I feel like this world, we're striving to look good in front of each other and to be recognized by each other mm -hmm. and to see how popular one we are in this world. And that's not what we're called to do. And I feel like that's why this burnout syndrome, that's an actual clinical syndrome now, has become what it is, is because we have, again, just misconstrued what the Lord has asked us to do. Like he wants us to work in excellence. He wants us to work as if we're working for the Lord, but we're not striving for what other man's opinions are. And I feel yeah. like a lot of the, the doing the, the kids looking good and the house looking nice and the, this, this, and that is because we are not walking in our purpose. And I think it's Ephesians two ten, right? It calls, it calls us to walk in for Christ and in a good purpose and to do the good work. Um, but that's for Christ. It's not for Tiffany to see how cute my daughter's outfit looks or for Jen to see how many followers I have on social media. It's for Christ that we're yeah. doing this good work. And so yeah. I think that's a lot of it, too, is our heart's intention. Yeah. Um, where is that at? And and looking at that perspective and, and then repenting like, Lord, forgive me. Help me. Show me. Um, yeah. 
going to Jesus is a great way for us to take care of ourselves so that we're not burnt out and that we can love others. Cause that's what we're ultimately called to do. Love others more than we love ourselves and love yeah. Jesus. Like that's yeah. what we are supposed to be doing when we're walking around on this earth. All the and other stuff is extra. It is. And as you were talking, a verse came to mind to me, Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, where Jesus says, come mm-hmm. to me, all who that's labor <laughs> and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. You know, come to me. That's where our true rest is found. And you were talking about how we strive. I think we're always striving. We're always trying to be better than the next person or going for the next big thing or trying to, um, you know, living by man's opinion. Like we want to be seen, looked well at from other men and we value their opinions. And But Jesus gives us that ultimate rest in that he, he he gives us our value individually when he tells us, hey, before the foundation of the world, you were chosen. God says we were chosen in him to be holy and blameless. Before we did anything, we were chosen by God, the right. creator yeah. of the universe. And so we can rest in that when we're striving yeah. because this world um, is temporary. You know, what we see yeah. is temporary. We are living for eternity. So yes. et- those things that are eternal. So when we focus our mind on that, we recognize that our value will never be found in anything in this earth. And so I can really just rest in Jesus, rest in the, yes. his work, who he is and who I am in him. Right. I love, <laughs> I was looking it up as you were saying it and I want to read it in the message version. <laughs> Um, I was about to because, say, Jen yeah. introduced, I was, I was doing the same thing. Um, and for those who aren't watch, listening, I just showed my phone because Jennifer this week introduced mm-hmm. me to the message version of Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. And Jen, please read it for everyone because it's yes. so, uh, so encouraging. And I'll, who I, just, I just need to precursor and say, whoever's listening to this, this is not pre-planned. And that is the spirit. So if you're listening to this, the spirit is speaking to you as much as it's speaking to us right yes. now. Um, Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me. And you'll learn to live freely and rightly. That's yeah. <laughs> when Jen read that uh, the other day, I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus, for that invitation. Because when you read it in the message, it's, it's an invitation to come to Jesus and lay it before him. And I knew it says, come to me all who are burning. I understand that. But just the message version just is so beautifully written. Um, just like, yeah, I do. I need that. Yeah, I need all of that, Lord, and I want to give that to you. So, and I and I think now will be a good time too to talk about you know when Jesus is talking about this, I believe his emphasis is on the law. Like they're walking around mm-hmm. trying to keep the law and trying to be perfect. And so, for those who are listening to this podcast who are struggling with sin, you know, like I'm I'm trying to get right on my own, right? I'm trying to do the right things. I'm trying to clean myself up. <laughs> to Jesus. Here is Jesus saying, come to me and find that rest. You don't have to clean yourself up first yeah. before coming to me. Come to me. Just come. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's interesting. I'm reading a book called Forming and it's really good. just want to read you a piece of the book that I, I stuck out to me this morning. It says, change, change comes from living in the presence of God and the internalizing reality as God sees it, not from trying harder. Mm-hmm. Repentance is simply a way of identifying a specific area in which we want God involved mm-hmm. and for which we desire his transforming hand. Engaging with the author of life will bring about healing and transformation like nothing else. Mm-hmm. And it really mm-hmm. is, it's in, and you can't give this to somebody. I think that's the thing where we yeah. want it. We, we've yeah. experienced it and we want it so much for anyone who's mm-hmm. listening to this but you have to go get with him like you we can, yeah. we can share with you and we can encourage you and we can share man like I am not who I was 
20 yeah. years ago, I'm not yeah. who I was a few months ago. God is working, but it's in the going and being with him. Yes. That it works. It's not yes. because, and I believe me, I'm a hard worker. Mm. I, I, yeah, I, I think I'll. <laughs> I like to get these done. We're all high right. performers here. Yeah, so productive, <laughs> it's good. When my day is not so productive, I wrestle. Yeah. I wrestle with my with things don't feel good, and there, there there's something God is working on there, and God is showing me that it's in this intimacy with Him, it's in being with Him that the transformation will happen. And you just can't give that to somebody. You gotta go and be with Him. Yeah. And that reminds me in Mark 6 when um, the disciples were working really hard and even Jesus was like, just rest a while. Like, I see what you're doing. Like, just rest a while. Like, even like Jesus sees what we're doing. He sees we're high performers and he's encouraging us to just rest a while. Just not, not forever, just for a moment. And, and he encourages excellence. He wants to see us do great things for in his name, for sure. But yeah, that just reminded me and Mark, like they were doing all the things. He's like, that's great. Now eat and sleep and rest just for a while and then go back to doing what you were doing. So yeah, just going to Jesus is, is the solution. If you're like, how, why, when, just take it to Jesus. Ask him for the how, why, when. He will provide you all those things that you need, all the moments in time in the day when you're like, my day is jam-packed. I don't have the time. Ask Jesus for it. He will, he will stop the clocks. <laughs> I'm quotating here. Um, but he will give you all that you need so that you can rest a while because he's a good father and he will take care of you. Um, but you really have to submit and surrender these things to him, not take them back like here, but let me take them back, but really surrender them to him um, so that you can have this, these not only rest, but opportunities to take care of yourself so that you can love others well. Because that's, what we're, we're talking about. And I think it's important too. I think, um, Jen, you talked about this before. Um, like God created this beautiful world and he wants us to enjoy it and have fun. But I believe we can miss it. We can really miss it. Just bulldozing through our day and trying to do more and be more and hustle and do all the things. And I was watching something last night on TV, but it was it just reminded me like sometimes we think we are to wait. Why? Right? Like I'm going to wait until my kids get a certain age. I'm going to wait until my kids get out of the house. Then I'll be able to rest or, I'm, or then I can start enjoying life or then I can. You know, it's like we always have this moment in time where we think things are going to click. The sky is going to open and now I can enjoy my life. But life is to be in, like this is life where you are right now in your marriage with your children, where you live, the church you attend, the community you in, you're in, like this is life today, yeah. right here, right now. And we can enjoy it and rest today. Not yeah. when we have reached this perceived perfection that we have created and our, our mind is going to come and everything's going to fall into place. You know, yeah. and I don't want to miss it. I don't <laughs> don't want to miss it. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. Um, especially, yeah. I remember when the girls were little and being, Oh, I can't wait till they get to school. And then I can't wait till they start driving. And then, yeah. And now that I have my older one and just looking at my little one, yeah, I don't want to miss it. I want to be in whatever season I'm in right now, making the best of the season that God's given me. Yes. And enjoying yeah. it. Not making yeah. the best, like striving by like buckling up my bootstraps and making the best, like enjoying the season mm -hmm. that I'm in right here, right now. Because um, you will miss it and you'll look yeah. back and be like, oh, I was waiting on something that I could have had right then and there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, where so does let's get some practical tips. Uh, I guess three practical tips that each one of us do to take care of ourselves so that we can love our husbands well, our children, if you have children well. We all have children, but love others well. Hey, y'all, we know that you're in the middle of listening to this episode. We would really love for you to take the time to subscribe, share this podcast with a friend. Or it would be a great encouragement to us if you left a voice message and shared your thoughts for today's episode. Now I'll let you get back to the show.
Mm. I would say for me, um, you know, like we're all different and the Holy Spirit convicts us of different things. But I believe for me that I would start by saying not really a practical tip per se, but just to share where the Lord is working in me is rest, like rest. And I don't do a lot of that. <laughs> you know, it's hard for me to sit still. It's very uncomfortable. So it's hard for me to sit still. And some days I'm tired and I could go take a nap, right? I could. I mean, Reese and I are here. We could take a nap together. You know, and the Lord's blessed me in this season to where I can, I, I'm able to stay home and um, I have time to rest, but I don't do it because for some reason in my mind to rest in some ways is lazy or because that's what the culture said. Like, if I'm going to rest, I'm not just so I feel like I need to be doing something. And so for me, a practical would be to just rest, to be still, um, to just get quiet. And it's OK. Like, it's OK to sit down and do nothing. You know, it's OK. <laughs> but for me, I, I, you know, just wrapping my mind around that unproductiveness. But it's really not. It, it really isn't unproductive. It is productive because you're not necessarily um, you may not be doing anything physically, but spiritually, you know, this soul care, this that you're receiving and cultivating these spiritual disciplines of quietness and rest. you. Um, are a value, I would say. Yeah, that's a good tip. Yeah, I think just personally, what it looks like is um, something that really refreshes my soul is worship. And so I do have some intentional times of worship where, um, where I just sing and I just, because my, my soul needs it. Like mm -hmm. I have to remind my soul often because I am a a high performer, a productive person who wants to get a lot done. I have a lot of aspirations and dreams. And, and so I think that I need that time to, to worship. And then um, you guys know, like Sunday mornings is my long run. I try not to do it with anyone else. Cause I'm usually, you know, it's just as an introvert too, if I don't get time alone with me and God, I, I have a hard time. So I think I have to have those spaces and, and we're learning how to practice Sabbath. I wouldn't say we're pros at it, but we're trying to practice that. Um, and so I think that those are the places for me. I'm leaning into those, those places, you know, of just where I can worship and remind my soul and slow it down. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, I like to read a lot. So if I, you know, I've been trying to take one scripture and just go through it slowly, you mm -hmm. know, and, and hear what God is saying and practicing silence. So those are some of the disciplines I feel like, you know, it's similar, right. Of just, of being able to stop and not produce and be okay and trust and and then in it that that worship piece for me and then yeah I think that was that's what I would say yeah and you made me think of something Jan because sometimes like even um on Sunday right I say hey I'm not gonna do anything I'm just gonna rest but then I think oh I can get ahead for the week so I can go do this laundry <laughs> I can iron these clothes I can get this so now I'm like set up for the week let me prep something but just to sit down just sat down have several seats it's gonna be okay <laughs> <laughs> go ahead D. yeah it's um so the Sabbath is it's because of the way I was raised and it was manipulated I've had issues with Sabbath. Um, and so the Lord is actually, I'm coming out of a season of rest. I feel like my life is about to get very busy. And so I've had opportunities to Sabbath more throughout the day, not necessarily an entire day dedicated to worship the Lord. And so I'm really praying that I take what the Lord has been teaching me and continue to take it into this next season. But something um, for me is to play more. Uh, the Lord told me about a year ago, that I need to just play, just play and have fun. And not everything needs to have intentionality to it. Be silly. Um, I've been taking classes from other instructors just to kind of just have fun. I like to move my body. That's something practical for me. Moving my body helps my mind, helps me easily go to sleep. Um, and so that's something, but just playing, um, not necessarily Barbies. Cause I'm not that mom. Like I'm not a Barbie playing mom, but 
<laughs> just playing and having fun and just not like not anything really intention to it. That's mm -hmm. something that's practical for me to take care of myself so that I can love others well. Um, nourishing my body well is something for me. If I don't and I feel like crap, I don't feel good and I don't respond well. I react often. And I, honestly, I just have a digestive system that I need to nourish it well or it, I just have a hard day. And um, I'm really good. I've gotten good at prioritizing me time. When the girls were younger, I did not know what that meant. So I, I think I'm good with that. But um, reading again, mm -hmm. I do not read. Uh, it's I... And so I have, I'm looking at a whole stack of books of, I have intentions to read, <laughs> but just taking, so I want to play, but I also want to sit still and read throughout yeah. my day and continue my ongoing Sabbath that the Lord has been um, really working me all, I'd say for the last five or six months. Um, that's still practical tips for me to take care of myself in this season that I'm in right now um, so that I can love my family well. Mm. So... Yeah, I think it's good you brought that up too, because everything that we've kind of talked about today, we didn't really talk about the loving others well, but I think a lot about that piece of it. But I think everything that we've talked about today, when we do those things, then we are able to, it, I believe it just, it's not, it doesn't become something we force that we have to do. It just flows out of us. Overflow. Because yeah. we've been filled up. Yeah. 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 It's an overflow. Yeah, so, so maybe this you know, episode as we, as we talked about caring for yourselves well, and I love how Dee put it, right? You know, who, who do, I, I love getting my nails done. I like getting my toes done for sure. A good massage is good, right? And those things are not bad. But um, when we're talking about really caring for ourselves so we can care for others well, we pray that this episode blessed you. We pray that you have walk in a, walked away with one or two things, you guys. You don't have to do it all. Pick one or two things as we were speaking that the Lord spoke to you to try to, to see what happens and notice. And we'd love to hear from you. So if you if you try something, come back on the episode on the bottom of the link. It should tell you can write a note or you can you know, send us a voice message because we're in this together. We're living in this world. And really the greatest commandment is to love others the way Christ has loved us, right? Love, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and then love your neighbor as yourself. And so we pray that we can walk along this journey with you. Um, so we want to cry. We want to laugh. We want to grow closer to Jesus together. And we'll see you next time.